I'm Mr. Steve Rose, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve has an outstanding show here every trading day, 1 to 2 Eastern Standard Time. Also, has a great newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to see hit newsletters. It's going to be right on the right-hand side top. You can get Mastering Probability for one month for $149. You can get it for six months at a price point of $695, which is a savings of $199 at 22%. And you can get it for one year for $1,195, which is a savings of $593 at 33%. Now, they all come, folks, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you can check it out. If you like it, keep it. And on top of that, Steve has a huge amount of archives out here that get you to understand exactly how he looks at the market each and every day. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Well, I am still defrosting from my uh, trip up to uh, New York City this past uh, five days out there. I, I, I certainly like the 84-degree uh, temperature better than 48. A and gray. <laughs> and gray. Well, you know, we had some, we had some, uh, we had some nice clear skies oh, a couple yeah, days. Okay, but, good. But you good. know, so kind of on. So it was a, a friend of mine's wedding that was supposed to be three years ago. Nice. And you know, they finally, you know, with COVID and everything, okay. they finally were able to pull it off. But uh, so I have uh, my bucket list. I thought it'd be nice to go see the Christmas tree lighting in Rockefeller Center. Yes. I've done the ball drop yeah. uh, many years ago, had okay. a blast doing that. So I figured, well, as long as we're going up, let's make sure that we can take that in. Put the plane ride up there, Tom. You know, and it, it, we've heard about delays and everything. We yeah. get there on time. Supposedly it was on time. Three hours late. We're flying into uh, LaGuardia. This is last Wednesday, kind of late in the afternoon. And you know how bad of a plane ride it is when, when you land and everybody starts clapping. Yep. I mean, big applause. So, uh, but uh, glad to be back. You were hitting here. that turbulence. Yeah, there's some, you Ooh. know, I went to Boston just for the night to have a dinner with one of my friends. And uh, um, they were, the pilot was talking about uh, sometime this part of the year, there's turbulence up there, taking, uh, taking off and landing. Yeah, yeah right. absolutely. I was, you know, 50 mile per hour type uh, winds or what have you. But, yeah. you know, it's one of those times where, you you know, you're you're in the, you're committed <laughs> and you're coming down and, you know, <laughs> the, the plane's going sideways up and down. And I've, I've, I've got three million miles that I've flown on Delta. You're committed alone. to stay alive, Steve yeah, That's exactly, right. <laughs> exactly. So I was like, I was trying to get everybody to lift their windows up. You know, if it's going to be the end, I want to see it. Totally. Uh, uh, but, uh, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but yeah, but any bit. So, uh, so look, the S&P 500, as we know, we've talked about this from uh, time to time. It's entered its uh, bullish seasonal cycle which typically forms in the uh, middle of October. And that's a little red arrow that is on our screen here. This is a chart courtesy of the folks over at SeasonX. And this is take a look at 72 years worth of data for the S&P 500 out here. So we know that we're in the favorable seasonal cycle. And therefore, the Santa Claus rally is intact. I'll use the words here at the moment, though. Yep. And the reason I use at the moment is because if we take a look at last week's price action, the S&P 500 hit the top of this descending trend line. And this is the descending trend line that really shows the bear market in essence that we have been in. So if the Santa Claus rally is really going to unfold, price has got to close above. I'll use last week's high, 4,100. Certainly you can say just to close above the descending trend line, but we'll just use last week high at this moment out there. So close above 4,100 would then say, okay, the Santa Claus rally is in fact intact, but right now we're dealing with the trend line resistance. And so if price is hitting trend line resistance, the question is, has the S&P 500 topped? So to answer that question, I always like to turn to the stock market patterns. You mentioned that subscribers to my newsletter service will get uh, loads of archives that will take a look at the different top and bottoming patterns, some which we'll talk about here right now. So this is the daily chart for the S&P 500. And what this shows, and there's multiple A to B equals CD patterns out here, but this shows a completed 1 to 1.618 A to B equals CD pattern. Now, I know somewhere in your book, The Art of Timing the Trade, yeah. you've got something. In it. And I don't know if it's the 1 to 1.618, Tom, or is it the 1 to 2? No, it's the 1 you... to 1.618, yeah. And sometimes okay. they go 1 to 2, but once you hit 1 to 6.618, Media change of trend, right? Oh, all right. So, so what you and I now know is the S and P 500 owns your book, yeah. <laughs> because it hit the one to one point six one eight perfectly last week uh, on uh, Wednesday, 
or Thursday, that is, and, and obviously uh, we've backed off. And so now the reason I use the word completed with regard to completing the A to B equals CD pattern, because people can see the one-to-one -one here with these with this tool that I've got at the one to one point two seven two level and the one to one point six right. The reason I use the word completed is because for me the pattern completes when it generates a reversal candle. In this case here, because the market's been moving higher, we're looking for a bearish reversal candle. And today unless there's some major rally in the next uh, 40, uh, uh, 37 minutes out here, today we should see a bear sash candle for the S&P 500. And Tom, that's where I would take a look at as completing the 1 to 1 1.618 A to B equals CD pattern. Now, oftentimes, instruments, I'd mentioned there's multiple A to B equals CD patterns. So I showed the smaller one. Here's the larger one, which hasn't really, and this had a price projection or has a price projection of 41.18. So if we do get a close above last week's high, price will then go ahead and target that 41.18 level, maybe even make more than a one to one larger A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. So how do we know if today is a top or if today is just a retracement? And that's really the question that each of us should be asking. And for that, what I do is I turn to the TAS market profiles. We move from the S&P 500 chart, and then I move over to the ES Mini, so the S&P futures chart. And the yellow arrows here, Tom, that I'm showing everybody, uh, show the bottom of new profiles as they form. And what people should see here is that if they're asking themselves, where is the buy the dip point out here? Well, we can see it as, as, price, as price hits the bottom of those profiles, that is where the buyers are lined up. So this is the ES Mini. This is the daily time frame chart out there. And here we see that the uh, uh, these uh, that that this these lows have held. So have, have the the bottoms of these profiles have held since the October lows. So we will know that there is a change in trend if we see a close below the bottom of the daily profile for the ES Mini. So the the number that folks should write on their pad of paper is thirty nine thirty nine. If we see a close below 39.39, obviously something will have been different since the October lows. And we can say officially that there would be a change in trend inside the S&P 500. That's what will help us to identify whether this is just a retracement because pulling back to support is a normal thing. Just like we did here in about the middle of November, price was pulling back. Maybe it looked like, OK, it was over. But all that price was really doing was testing support. So really critical area, this 39.39 uh, level. Now, as far as the other indices go, if we take a look at this, I've got the S&P in the upper left, the NASDAQ in the upper right, which hasn't even gotten to the trend line. The Dow most certainly uh, is above the trend line. And the uh, Russell 2000 closed just above it last week, but it looks like perhaps this is a false breakout to the upside out there. Now, in the case of the uh, Dow, with it being above the uh, uh, is descending trend line. That's really about global capital flows. And this chart here shows the global capital flows for the Dow price in euros, pounds and yen. The purple line out here shows the actual high in reference to when the high was made inside the Dow priced in dollars. We can see that those highs have been taken out priced in euros, yen and pounds out there. So the Dow um, is also generating a topping pattern today. And this is what I refer to as the Rhodes Minton Indicator Top. And this is, uh, is so so we've got tops in the S&P, we've got tops in the uh, uh, in the uh, Dow, and now it's really critical is to watch those levels of support. So I gave you the level for the ES Mini, for the Dow, or the 30, YM. 30, 39, 39. The 33, 429, that's the price point to watch. Pretty cool. Folks, come over to our website at TFNN. Newsletters, you'll see Maximum Probability on the right-hand side. Hit that button. You are off to the races. Have a great one and safe one. Look forward to the show tomorrow, Steve. Thanks, Tom. Take Thank care. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back.